Hey, this is Kirk, and welcome. Today, we're going to talk about three of my favorite pianos that I use all the time if I'm writing for a film or working on ambient music for my project, We Dream of Eden. Now, these pianos range in price from free to not free to very not free. And I'm going to walk you through how I process them, how I use them in different applications. They're all beautiful. They're all lovely in their own special ways. And I'll even show you something I do that can make pretty much any piano sound cooler. So let's dive in. All right, here we go. We got the three pianos. We got the soft piano. We got the intimate grand. And we got the Olafur Arnold's felt piano. Now, these are all from Spitfire Audio. Um, the soft piano is free. The Intimate Grand, I think, is about $29 or pounds. And Olafur Arnold comes inside of the Olafur Arnold's Composer Toolkit, which I believe at this point in time is $299. They run sales every once in a while and that kind of thing. But they're all awesome in their own ways. And honestly, I used this soft piano for a solid year before I ever invested in any other pianos, and it just works. So let's listen to them, and we'll go from there. All right, here's Lab's soft piano. Sounds like this. Let's go down low. It's a lovely sound. It's it's a felt piano. Um, it's it's very soft. It has a very limited dynamic range, meaning I can bang on it, and it's not going to jump out. It's almost like a built-in compression, but it's it's because of the limited amount of samples that are recorded. So lovely, lovely piano. Then we have this guy, the Intimate Grand. Um, this is just the stock setting when you open it up. It sounds like this. Also lovely. But it's a completely different instrument. It's a completely different sound, right? Here's the soft. Here's the grand. Right? It's way brighter. It's a little bit thinner, but you could see how it would cut through a mix a lot better. And here is Olaf Roll's... Oh, <laughs> it's really hard to say his name. Uh, Oliver Arnold's Composer Toolkit Felt Piano. You can hear how notes kind of jump out a little bit more. So what's the difference between these pianos? I mean, just listening, I'm sure you're picking up on stuff, but the way I would describe it is the soft piano and the felt piano, they're both very dark. They're felt pianos, so a lot of the high end is gone, which is what makes it beautiful and soothing to me and why I like it for film and ambient. Um, it's almost like... Oliver's piano is a more vivid image of this soft piano. It's like the soft piano is very basic. You get a couple dynamic layers. You get detail. But Oliver is a lot more detail, a lot more dynamic. And then the intimate grand is is brighter and also dynamic. It's very thin, comparatively. But 
but is also dynamic. So why would I use, when would I use what I'm going to use, right? So if I'm doing something that is very solo piano heavy, I will probably use the Olafur Arnold's felt because it's got a lot of low end, it's got a lot of dynamic interests, it's got some cool sounds that catch your ear. So I like that a lot for solo heavy projects, solo piano heavy projects. Now, if I have a lot of things going on in a mix, I would either use the Intimate Grand or I would go to the Olafur Arnold's and then EQ out some of the tubbiness in the low mids. That way it leaves more room for things like synthesizers and basses and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, But it's not going to cut through as much as the Intimate Grand will. For the soft piano, I use this a lot if I'm using my piano as more of a texture, doing some chords or doing some sprinkly bits, and it's not a main focus of what I'm doing. Unless I really just want that super subdued, felt piano feel. I almost like the soft piano more than the Olafur Arnold's because it's so subdued and it's very playable to where I'm not going to make a lot of uh, dynamic mistakes while I'm playing. It's just going to sound good. So those are the three pianos, just raw. I want to talk a little bit about how I process them. One thing I usually always do is a little bit of EQ roll off on the very bottom end. If you listen to this and watch, even on high notes, you get this real rumble going on down here. So I like to roll that off, especially if I'm gonna be having things like sub basses and low strings, I just don't want it. And a lot of times I'm gonna be up here anyways in this register. So the fundamental is way up here. So I don't need this stuff down here. Now if I'm doing big spread triads down low, I might back this off or take it off completely. But if I'm up here in the mid range or doing high bits, I don't want this thuddy low hammer sound for most of my productions. Now, I will say sometimes that pedal sound or that hammer thunk gives it life and makes it feel real. Um, and there's times where that's actually appropriate and wonderful. But a lot of times it just gets in the way of the other instruments that I'm trying to add into a piece. So that's one thing I will definitely do to all three of these is some type of low roll. So the next thing that I would do, I don't do it on the soft piano. I don't need to compress this thing. Because of the dynamic layers, it's basically self-compressed, so I don't need to do that. However, you may have noticed on things like the Olafur Felt, if I lay into this thing, it almost peaks. There it goes. Okay, so I can either adjust that with my playing, or I can adjust that here with this volume slider here. Or I can do just some subtle compression. So I like I like the platinum and I like the FET. Turn off my auto gain. Bring up my threshold for a second. Go super fast on my attack for the beginning. Get a, it starts to distort a little bit. So I just back off my threshold and back off my attack. So I'm getting about three to five for this. And then maybe just a smidge of makeup gain. You can go heavier, you can go lighter, 
but I'm just trying to catch those peaks, just trying to catch those peaks so that they don't overload and things don't jump out too much. And I would do something similar on the intimate grand. So I can just copy and paste that setting, open it up, and tweak it. So the intimate grand's not as loud as Olafur's thing, so you're gonna have to bring the threshold down. So I'm really just trying to catch that initial peak of the sound. It's a little bit of compression, a little bit of EQ, and roll off the sub sub this guy. And then the other thing I really like to do is play around with some modulation, some pitch modulation. So that would be the RC color box. Um, love this guy. Slightly addicted. I usually turn off the noise. Uh, let's see. And I can go heavy with it. Or I can be super subtle. I usually start heavy and then back off the subtle. And I like to slow down my rates. And then I do like this magnetic, which it's basically messing with the volume. This wobble's messing with the pitch. The magnetic is messing with the volume. Um, and then I do like a little bit of distortion. I like it through the tube, but I don't want to back it off. So there's that. That's with it. It's very subtle. Maybe add a little more. There it is. Cool. So we got a little bit of EQ, a little bit of compression, a little bit of wobble, and there's probably other plugins that do the same wobble thing. I like Sketch Cassette is another one. There's probably free ones out there. Um, let me know if there are. And we get our little piano. So let's listen to the intimate with this effect going on. I don't like it as heavy on the intimate because there's so much high end. It sounds a little too wobbly. But I usually love it on Olafur. Beautimus. Okay, so we got a little bit of EQ, a little bit of compression, a little bit of wobble, and then I might run things into some verbiage and some delay. So I got a kind of a ping pong delay here and just a regular vintage verb here. Here, I'll show you the vintage verb with the low ends rolled out. And then I got the stereo delay with just a dotted eighth and an eighth, a little bit of feedback rolling off the lows. And it sounds like this. Just gives it a little bit of uh, life there. So that's how I process these sounds, basically. One thing I will say is this is so dynamic. The Olafur felt is so dynamic that a lot of times if I'm doing a pass at something, rather than compress it, I will go back in and adjust the velocity. So I want to demonstrate that just so you can see what I'm talking about. So we got this piece here. Right, and I could try to compress this to get it to even out, but it's still not going to sound natural or good. So, to my ears at least. So I'm going to do this by hand. And it seems like a lot of work, but it actually goes quick. And it's so satisfying. So I'm going to bring those two up.
Take these down a little bit. See, and this one just got lost. It just didn't even sound. So I'm going to bring it up. And so when you're doing things with the Intimate Grin and the Old for Arnold's, you sometimes have to go back and do some velocity double checking and it's totally worth it. It's going to make everything feel really nice. With the soft piano, you don't have to do that as much because there's not as many velocity layers. So wanted to give you that. And then I wanted to show you one more thing that I do a lot of times uh, to these pianos and other pianos and other sounds really to just see if it adds interest. And it usually always does. So I do this. I will open up my thing, find my sound, and then just grab whatever inside tune there is and pitch it down. I might pitch it down an entire octave. It's it super dark. And you might say like, well, why? what does pitching it down do versus just moving your hand down an octave, right? So if I just moved my hand down an octave, versus pitching it down an octave. Ooh. You can hear, you can hear it's it's different. So just pitching it down an octave or moving your hand down, moving your hand down an octave is not going to give you the same sound as staying in that octave and pitching it down. It's because the actual samples are being stretched. And so the high end kind of goes away. The length of the sample is extended. And so some of the harmonic speed of wobbles and all that kind of stuff, it changes. And it just usually just sounds great. So, for example, this Intimate Grand, I think it turns into a whole other instrument when you pitch it down. So let's start here. And then turn it down octave which I wish this octave thing was not so like hard to get it to exact, but. You hear that sound? I, I like it, it's like a bell, I really like it. I, I usually prefer this thing down an octave um, and you can even go two octaves, which might be, might be crazy. So now we're leaving the piano realm of sound. But it's beautiful. So don't be afraid to pitch things down. Also, a lot of times an octave is too much, right? And so you can go three semitones, five semitones, seven semitones. The problem is you're going to be doing some mental math when it comes to figuring out what key you're in. So that's down seven, so I'm actually in the key of F, you know. If I go down five, what's that, key G? So play around with pitching your instruments down in semitones. Just know that you're going to be doing some mental math with your um, other instruments. All right, so there you go. We reviewed three pianos, talked a little bit about my processing and how I stretch things with the pitch shift to add interest. And if you have any other pianos that you love, I would love to hear about it because I'm always on the hunt for a new piano. So leave that in the comments. Also, I have a video here where I got some free sounds that I designed for you guys and I walk you through how I use them and how they sound. You can check that out here. And I have an entire class, it's like over eight hours that I did with Studio where I make two songs from scratch. I teach you about doing artwork and about how to promote your music after it's done. You can check out the trailer for that here. So have a great day and go make music.